Hey everyone, so uh, this week I saw the interesting news of the release of the Raspberry Pi Pico. This isn't something I've been tracking, I, it, maybe it wasn't news to other people, but I thought it was pretty interesting and exciting new device on the market. So I put in the order and it arrived today. I ordered this from, from Pi Hat. Um, I think they're like the official distributor or something like that. Um, and this is what they provided. In addition to the Raspberry Pi Pico itself, which I think is here. I ordered a few uh, little accessory things as well. So let's have a quick glance at those. Um, this is a bit random. I ordered a USB-C breakout board. They have quite a nice variety of these kinds of things on their site. So I thought I'd pad the order out. Um, so I'll probably use that for powering devices at some point. I ordered a header kit um, specifically for the Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, these are the stackable headers. I ordered these because I don't have any stackable headers, so they could come in handy for something, but I probably won't use them on this actual device. I have plenty of other headers I can use for that. And what was this? Oh yeah, this is some this is a little e-ink paper module. Um, so let's have a quick glance at that and then we'll get to the Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, they provided a, a, a cable for connecting it to other devices, which looks handy because that uh, that JST connector there looks like it would be pretty hard to wire otherwise. Um, and this is a 1.54 inch E paper module. Um, I think it's actually upside down in, in, in there, I'm not, sure, not even sure if you can see that on the camera. Um, I won't spend too long on this because the Pika is meant to be Star of the show. So there's the connector that the wire goes in, I guess, and the actual displays on the back. So this is e-paper. Um, I believe it should maintain its contents even when not powered. Um, it has, I think, an SPI interface. So I'll probably hook this up to the 6502 or the ARM or something like that at some point, or maybe one of these um, microcontroller boards like the Pico. Anyway, that was the plan for that. Not much of a plan, <laughs> just something to play with. Um, let's get back to the Raspberry Pi Pico. So that's here, they've put it in a nice anti-static bag, which is always good to see. And they seem to make their bags incredibly difficult to open. And there we have it. Let's just check the focus on that. So there you have it. It's fairly small board there. It's worth noting that this is significantly different to all of the other Raspberry Pi products. The other Raspberry Pi products are essentially single board computers. Um, general purpose computers running an operating system, whereas this is more of a microcontroller on a breakout board. It runs a bootloader, so you don't have to write everything from scratch, not like what I'll be doing with my ARM2 project. So the bootloader will kind of bootstrap your code, make sure that it all sort of gets loaded into memory and then executed. But functionally this behaves much more like an Arduino than a Raspberry Pi. So speaking of which, let's have a comparison against some similar microcontroller products. So just for size comparison, there's an Arduino Nano that I've been using for some time. Um, you can see it's slightly shorter than the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico. Significantly slower device. This, uh, I think the Nano runs at about 20 megahertz and it's an AVR core, single AVR core. The Raspberry Pi Pico, I believe, runs in the mid 100 megahertz range and has two ARM Cortex M0 cores. I also wanted to show a comparison against this, which is a Teensy 3.5. I got this a while ago. It's not the most recent Teensy. Teensy is a really interesting product range. They have a wide variety of different devices, different board lengths and sizes and things like that and capabilities. So it's not necessarily the case that the higher number is the best one to get. You do need to think a little bit about what your requirements are and get whatever suits you the best. The reason I got this is because it has an insane variety of I.O. pins. Uh, you can see it's a longer device and almost all of these pins are fit for digital I.O., uh, GPIO pins, essentially. Um, in addition, it actually has the ability to um, 
to have even more if you were to solder connections onto these pads on the circuit board there. So it actually has more I.O. than it can physically fit pins for. Um, I'm not quite sure how you would sort of solder straight onto a circuit board pad like that without the wire falling off really easily, but um, if, yeah, if you needed more parallel I.O., there it is. So the Teen Z 3.5, um, I, I actually stepped down to this version. I originally got the 4.1, but then had to send that back um, because the 4.1 is a 3.3 volt device, whereas the 3.5 here is a 5 volt device, or at least it's a 5 volt tolerant device. Um, and I wanted to use this for diagnosing the 6502, which is also a 5 volt device. Anyhow, the Teen Z here runs, I think, at the same kind of clock rate as the uh, new Raspberry Pi Pico does. And that has been extremely useful for monitoring 6502 behavior up to about 2 megahertz, I think, um, before this one ran out of steam. The newer, the newer Teen Z um, 4.1, I think, can run at like five, uh, 600 megahertz internally, which should be plenty to diagnose a 6502 even at full speed. Anyway, back to the Raspberry Pi Pico. So what's exciting about this? Well, the biggest thing for me, I've always had a soft spot for ARM. It, obviously, it does contain ARM cores. It contains two of them, but I already have the Teensy, which has ARM cores in it. The biggest thing for me that's exciting about the Raspberry Pi Pico is the programmable I.O. options. It has a built-in PIO system, which allows you to write simple programs to manage uh, I.O. pins without requiring the CPU's attention. So rather than bit banging something like uh, SPI or OneWire, you can program one of the PIO controllers to actually just manage that connection for you. If you want to have a shift register, for example, to um, output a, a serial stream of bits, then the CPU no longer needs to manage the timing of that and send the bits at the right times and things like that. The CPU can just tell the PIO to do that and, go, and the CPU can go back to doing its own thing. And I think there's an amazing amount of potential in this. We're already seeing people using this to make their own VGA interfaces and things like that. And I don't know the exact capabilities of the uh, PIO controllers, but um, in theory, the sky's the limit, or at least the memory amount's the limit, or the CPU complexity is the limit. That remains to be seen. And I believe the Arduino guys have also pledged full support for this, so they're going to integrate support for it into the Arduino IDE. Um, and I think they're also going to make their own clone of it using the, uh, the same uh, chip that the Raspberry Pi guys have designed here. Um, it'll be interesting to see how compatible those, those end up being with each other. So I don't have any direct projects that I want to use this for yet. I considered using it um, as part of my um, kind of ARM2 exploration. But the ARM2 is also a 5 volt device, and if I did that I'd need to do level shifting on the inputs and outputs and things like that. So when I come to make an ARM2 monitor I'll probably write it on the Teen Z instead. But I will be looking out for things that I can use the Raspberry Pi Pico for. First thing I'm going to need to do is solder some pin headers onto it. Um, and, you know, fire up the software and see what it's all about. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for today. Um, I'll probably come back with a follow-up when I've installed the software and found my way around enough to, to show you guys how it's used and what it can do. Please let me know if you do like this kind of content. It's a bit more high level than what I normally do, using microcontrollers rather than uh, building things up from lower level. But this is also something I like to do, and if you guys are interested as well, then I can certainly make more videos about this sort of thing.